Did you ever want to get into the booming cannabis industry? You are not alone. Many are drawn by the tales of quick fortunes and big time success with money larger than the THC loophole. But here's the catch. While on one hand there is a gold rush hitting inside the other hand, there is a reality check. Do you want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You've come to the right place. In this guide, we'll unveil both the glittery promises and the gritty realities of starting a cannabis business in 2024. Let's get started with the fundamentals of how to start a business in the cannabis industry. The first thing that you must know is where you are at. That's right. Where are you literally in this burgeoning field? And where are you geographically? Let's break it down like this. What are your goals in the cannabis world? Some view flipping THCA flower online as their entry into the industry. Others might hold a unique coastal delivery license or take advantage of lower entry barriers in states like New Mexico or Oklahoma. But be warned, this isn't the highly regulated cannabis landscape that many states are moving towards, navigating the complexities of a highly regulated cannabis market is no small feat. Now let's talk about your location. It's not just about where you want to open up shop, it's about the financial implications of that decision. In Oklahoma or New Mexico, starting a cannabis business might only cost tens of thousands of dollars, a stark contrast to the tens of millions of dollars required in states like Florida or Texas. And speaking of Texas, it doesn't even have really a legal industry yet. Location is paramount, except for hemp, which for now you can basically do that anywhere, especially online. Next up, the market type that you're aiming for. In an unlimited market state, entry costs are high, but your license is a golden ticket, making your business potentially a cash cow. What's the catch to that? You need substantial capital to launch and stabilize your venture, and probably even a little bit of luck because you may have had to win a lottery. On the flip side, open market states seem to spread the wealth, allowing almost anyone to secure a license. But here's that reality check. This openness invites fierce competition. It is a risky game where newcomers can lose big and only the most financially robust can afford to operate as a loss, driving the price down to edge out competition before stabilizing that price and raising it after they've shaken out all the losers. So take a hard look at your state's market type. And while we're on the subject of money, let's heed the wisdom of the Wu-Tang Clan. Cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the money, dollar, dollar, bill, y'all. But for the cannabis industry, it is more along the lines of cash flows rule everything around me. Here's the bottom line. Whether you're in a limited or open market state, cash is king. You need funds to launch in a limited market and grow and outlast competition in an open market. Before diving into the cannabis industry, arm yourself with knowledge and a lot of capital. After you've pinpointed your location and acknowledge the hefty capital need to get open for business, what's next? It's time to decide on the type of license you'll pursue. Unless, of course, you're in a super licensed state where the playing field is reserved for certain millionaires only, like lighting cigars with $100 bills types of millionaires. I think Arizona, Florida, Texas, with New York and New Jersey as echoes of the once dominant MMTC model. That's MMTC, the Medical Marijuana Treatment Center. It's the Rolls Royce of the cannabis world. At least it was a decade ago. This means owning the whole shebang, the grow, the processing facilities, and the dispensary. Maybe as many as you could open up, like in Florida. This is a vertically integrated from the get-go. Or perhaps Perhaps your state, like mine, separates the grow and processing from the dispensary. Here, you can stack license to create a vertically integrated business. But brace yourselves, this route demands tens of millions of dollars. Your financial models, they'd better be sharp. The cannabis investment climate is frosty after the stocks have sank about 80% over the past two years thanks to some big players with flawed financial strategies. Starting a cannabis business is no small feat in a world where mistakes are costly. So that's that's why you need the secret ingredient that every successful cannabis entrepreneur has. And do you know what it is? I'll tell you, compliance. And how do you get this compliance? Align your goals not only with investors, but also with your state's cannabis laws. Help your regulators achieve what they set out to do. Remember, they're navigating this new terrain just like you. They are crafting the rules that, while not perfect, do evolve over time. Compliance might sound like a dull, complex beast, but let's reframe it. Follow the rules meticulously and you could be raking in $10,000 a day as a dispensary in a limited market state. That's right, $10,000 a day, every single day or more. I've seen it firsthand. Total compliance plus legal sales in a limited market state equals a thriving legitimate business, at least for your state government. But let's ground ourselves. This success hinges on opening your doors, securing that limited license, and having financials meticulously lined up. And understanding these financial models that you'll have, that is an art in itself. It demands a deep dive into the p 
bells of a business operations, a level of insight that comes from hands-on experience in running a highly regulated cannabis venture in a limited market state. We're talking about a club with only a few thousand members worldwide because they really don't exist outside of the United States. And here's another twist. Many of those precious licenses were awarded by lottery. Suddenly, starting a multi-million dollar business feels akin to hitting the jackpot at a casino. It's a game of chance, and extensive planning can seem futile when it all boils down to drawing the lucky number. So as you embark on this journey, you've now armed yourself with hopefully a little bit more knowledge. You have a better understanding of the level of capital required, and don't forget, you also need a dash of luck. But let's take a breath. There's a silver lining here. Did you know that you could flip those limited licenses? It's more than just a concept. It's a viable business model in many jurisdictions. Picture this, you win a limited license. Before you know it, you're strategizing how to sell it operational or not. The key, it all circles back to the regulators and their rules. If they give the nod, you're golden. In highly regulated limited market states, the mantra is simple. Secure the license and the blessings of the regulators. Opening your cannabis business means diving into a tightly regulated limited market or going into an open market with the best financials and raising a lot of cash either way. It's not for the faint of heart, but it is for the persistent and determined entrepreneurs that want in on those cash flows, like in Illinois. In July of 2023, when 136 dispensaries shared 140 million in sales. That's over a million on average per each one. You can get into it too, if you're determined and good. I launched my cannabis business from the ground up. These videos, they began in the very house where my advisory business was born back in 2020. Now they're produced at the office my business has afforded me. And the future, picture this broadcasting live from our very own dispensary once we've raised the funds and cut the ribbon for its grand opening in 2024. And the best part is you're invited to learn the ropes straight from the source. Mate, find a wealth of knowledge waiting for you at CannabisIndustryLawyer.com. If this resonates with you, smash that like button and drop us a comment. We sure appreciate it here at CLN. Tune in on Sundays.